If there's one thing I've learned about the combat in Horizon Forbidden West after spending more than 460 hours in the game, it's that there isn't just one thing to know about the combat. Whether you're new to the series or a veteran, it seems as though there's always something new to learn. So let's take a look at some advanced but practical combat tips that you can start using right now to improve your combat, deal increased damage, and take out machines with style and ease. Let's start with what I think is probably the most OP item in all of the Forbidden West, smoke bombs. Smoke bombs are great because they can provide you with a buffer against machines, and they'll also instantly put you in stealth, and stealth can be a really powerful way to deal damage. Through armors like the Quen Deadeye or the Nora Thunder Warrior, you'll be able to max out the stealth ranged plus skill to level 4, which gives you an additional 40% impact damage when in stealth. There are also weapons coils like the plus 25% stealth damage coil, which gives you some of the highest damage increases in the game. Smoke bombs also pair really nicely with rope casters. Throwing down a smoke bomb and then using a rope caster to tie down a confused machine can get you through just about any situation in the game and is one of the best combinations I know of to instantly turn the tide of a fight. Now smoke bombs can be pretty resource heavy to craft, but aren't all that expensive to buy from a merchant, only 60 shards. So I always make sure to buy them whenever possible. And hey, if you find this tip useful, be sure to give this video a like. As a small channel, every like really is appreciated and it does help me out. Now let's talk about your hunter bow, because this is probably one of the biggest mistakes I see new players make. If you're like me and started out playing Horizon Zero Dawn, then you're probably used to your hunter bow being your primary weapon. But combat in the Forbidden West is a lot different than in Zero Dawn, and your hunter bow, while great at some things, is not great as a primary damage weapon. Impact damage on hunter bows is generally pretty low. Let's compare the impact damage you get from the Tears of the Land God hunter bow, which is arguably the best hunter bow in the game, to the sharp shot bow you can buy very early on from the merchant in Chain Scrape. It's a sharp shot bow literally just called sharp shot bow. It's so unremarkable, it doesn't even have a cool name, and yet the impact damage it does is just about the same. But hunter bows, like all weapons in the Forbidden West, do have a purpose. They typically have pretty high tear, which makes them great for tearing off machine parts and components, and some of them specialize in certain types of elemental ammo like frost and shock. Paired with weapon techniques like the triple notch weapon technique, hunter bows are great at building up and dealing elemental damage. I like having a hunter bow in my weapon wheel that specializes in elemental damage like frost, and another one loaded up with tear coils for picking off machine parts. And speaking of dealing damage, let's talk about critical hits, because this is one of the best ways to inflict maximum damage. Now you'll know when you get a critical hit because the damage indicator is yellow as opposed to white. Critical hits give you the highest damage multipliers in the game, but only happen naturally 5, 10, or 15% of the time, depending on your weapon. So if you're out to inflict maximum damage, you need to increase your chances of getting a critical hit. The best way to do that is through coils like the plus 10 or plus 15% critical hit chance coils, or the new elite critical hits coil you get in the Burning Shores. Critical hits though are particularly powerful when used with either sharp shot bows or bolt blasters. With sharp shot bows, you get a 2.5x damage multiplier, so they can be a great way to deal a lot of damage in a single shot. And with bolt blasters, you get a 2x damage multiplier, and because they have such a fast rate of fire, they can be a really powerful option for dealing damage. But critical hits only happen naturally with these weapons 5 or 10% of the time. So loading them up with critical hit chance coils is going to give you the best chance of dealing a critical hit on every shot. Another great tool to use in combat is knockdowns. Now chances are you've triggered knockdowns in the past, but you could be missing a real opportunity by not using them regularly. Knockdowns are great because they can help provide you with a buffer when going up against a group of machines or used in combinations with something like the new grapple strike skill for dealing big damage. When it comes to knockdowns, there are two stats you need to pay attention to, knockdown power and knockdown damage. Knockdown power is the weapon's ability to trigger a knockdown, and knockdown damage is the damage buff you get when a machine is in the knockdown state. And a good way to take advantage of both stats is also in combination with the new elite knockdown coil that you get in the Burning Shores. The elite knockdown coil not only increases knockdown power by 15%, but also knockdown damage on explosive ammo. A fun combination that I found is using the drill spikes from the last argument spike thrower, which are great at triggering knockdowns, 
and then equipping the Elite Knockdown Coil to my Sharp Shot Bow and using the Brace Shot Weapon Technique. Another good tip for dealing damage is to be in low health. It might seem counterintuitive, but low health can be extremely powerful for dealing damage. With the low health range skill maxed to level 4, through armors like the Tanakh Vanquisher or the Tanakh Skirmisher, and weaves like the low health ranged weave, you can get an 80% damage increase when your health is below 50%. Low health can also be stacked with other damage buffs like stealth to become extremely powerful. If you're interested in how to use low health and stealth together to deal maximum damage in a single shot, I recently did a video that takes you through everything you need to know. I'll be sure to link that video in the description below. And speaking of health, timing is everything when it comes to getting back your health, refilling your berries, or even crafting ammo. Doing these things mid-battle when you're being chased by a machine can be a little frustrating. But if you know where to look, there's actually some pretty good windows you can take advantage of that don't leave you open to an attack or disrupt the flow of battle. For example, some machines like Slaughter Spines, Clamor Jaws, or Claw Striders do this really annoying thing where they scream really loud and it stuns Aloy so she can't shoot. But this is actually a really great time to craft ammo since it can be done during the stun animation. And the new Grapple Strike skill, which is great at dealing some extra damage when a machine is pinned down, also gives you a really good window to heal and refill your berries. I always make sure to press up on the D-pad whenever I'm mid grapple strike. Now another tip that's probably a little bit more well known, but can definitely be tricky to pull off, is that you can avoid taking damage from a plasma explosion by dodging at just the right time. Once you've been inflicted by plasma, you'll have about 15 seconds until the plasma meter runs down and the plasma explodes. And depending on your health and how much damage you take while the meter runs, it doesn't typically end well. But if you dodge at just the right time, Aloy will take the hit, but avoid taking any actual damage. Now to pull this off, you'll want to wait until the plasma timer runs all the way down, and then listen for the plasma sound to start to crescendo and then go silent. The second that it goes silent is when you'll want to hit dodge. Pulling this off in the heat of battle can definitely be tricky, and it is much, much easier to just take a cleanse potion. But if you're able to pull it off, it can be extremely satisfying. And that's my list of advanced combat tips that every Horizon player should be using. Do you have any other tips that I've missed? If so, please let me know in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe for even more Horizon Forbidden West and Burning Shores combat tips and tricks. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.